Hello humans, I'm the Alien Doctor, but you can call me Alien, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition preview slash beta video. Today we'll be taking a look at preview 1.18.30.23, or if you're on the beta, then it's 1.18.30.22, because they have different names still, which is really quite annoying for videos like this, but anyway. <laughs> this preview has given us an absolute ton of changes and additions, including random tick speed fixes, the LA, Shulker Farms, and updated Touch UI, and even more, which we'll of course be covering in this video. You are not going to want to miss this preview. So first of all, let's take a look at arguably one of the biggest features in today's preview, and that is the addition of the LA mob. The LA was of course the winner of the Minecraft mob vote last year, so it is absolutely great to see that it has already been added a lot sooner than expected in my opinion. So let's spawn this guy in and take a look at it, and as you can see it's like a Vex, but it's blue, and it flies, and uh, well it is actually, wow that's pretty cool, it's a lot smaller than I was expecting, and yes this is actually my first time seeing it in action. Now I know it's just flying around, now I believe if we were to give it an item, don't quite know how, okay you right click it, so I've right clicked it some dirt, it should now go and collect dirt, so if I put a dirt there, it's going to collect it, and is it just going to give it back, oh it is, okay so apparently if you play a note block, then yeah that becomes the LA's favourite note block, and in theory, it should now give this dirt to the note block, which it is, oh wow that's very cool. So when you play a note block, the LA becomes like sort of linked to that note block for 30 seconds. So if I play this once, for the next 30 seconds, it is actually going to drop items at this note block. After that 30 seconds, it will then reprioritize the player again, which is quite a cool little mechanic. It also has its own inventory as well, but it will try to give it to its owner, whether that be the note block or the player. And these guys will spawn in cages next to pillager outposts and inside woodland mansions as well. So that means that they're possibly not farmable in the sense that you're probably going to have to go out and find them. Like I don't think they will respawn or anything like that, or maybe they do. Or this feature could of course be temporary as well. Yeah, it's really cool. And I'm assuming it's going to work for things like diamonds as well, isn't it? Right, let's see. Let's give this guy a diamond. Oh, interesting. So I'm right clicking and it's not swapping out. If I, oh, okay. So I right click it with my hand. That takes out the item. I then right click it with the diamond or just another item. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's sort of the diamond. So if a player is holding an item that it's trying to get, then apparently it should follow me. So like I'm holding a diamond. So in theory, it should just come with me, which it looks like it is. This is actually very, very cool. And then obviously if we drop these diamonds, it's going to pick them up and then give them to me. Even if I'm just holding nothing in my hand. Oh, that is actually really cool. Okay, and then obviously the same thing with the note block as well. It's going to pick up all of these diamonds and then drop them at the note block. So exiting out of the game real quickly, I actually managed to find the files for the experimental wild update behavior pack or like the vanilla behavior pack so we can see here a couple of stuff about the la so this right here is the entity file in the behavior pack for the la so let's kind of see what information we can get from this so first of all you can see here it has got its collision box of a width and a height of 0 0.8 you can see here it has a value of 16 health, it will die in lava, and it has a flying speed of 0.2. Of course, I have absolutely no idea what that would be measured in. We could also see that it can pathfind over water, but it cannot sink in water. It also can't pass through doors, but it can of course pass through air. It does also avoid water and avoid damage blocks but it will not avoid the sun, so it's not a zombie or anything like that. And then you can also see it doesn't have any gravity because of course it can fly. Interestingly, it's also pushable by a piston. However, I don't know if that quite works properly on bedrock anyway. Okay, so this right here is quite interesting. You can see here it's got an inventory size of one. So does this actually mean that it literally only has one slot? You can see here that it also has all of these sort of behaviors for picking up the item which you can sort of read them they're pretty basic and that is pretty much it for the entity file you can see here that nothing in the experimental wild update behavior pack has an actual loot table other than the frog 
And you can also see that the LA has no spawn rules. It's only the frog and tadpole that do in the experimental world update data pack. Data pack, this isn't Java edition. <laughs> Vanilla add-on or whatever it's called. Jeez. So as you can see right here, I've built up this sort of basic item filter type of thing. So as you can see here, we can drop in some diamonds and then like some netherrack and a fire charge, more diamonds. And you can see here that it will only pick up the diamonds, throw them in the harbor and then put them in this chest. And yes, it does also work for non-stackable items, which I have tested earlier, although we should probably clear out this thing now. So of course we know that this guy has an inventory size of 1 because we took a look at the vanilla behavior pack files. However, just to kind of show you this in detail, right now it is set to actually drop the items to the player and not to a note block or anything like that. If we drop in two stacks of diamonds, you can see here that it's actually only going to pick up one stack. The other stack will then just go away back into my inventory. Now, of course, if we either stand closer to it or just link it up to a note block, it should start dropping those diamonds, which it now is doing. So now what I'm going to do is actually drop it a non-stackable item. And you can see here that it's only going to pick up one non-stackable item and then its inventory will, of course, be filled. So as you can see there, it just all of those diamond chest plates just went by. Now, as you can see right here, I picked up all of them other than one. That is because the one that was in this slot has actually been taken by the LA. If we actually grab ourselves a note block and place it down and link it to it and stuff, you can see there that it actually then drops the chest plate that it picked up. Obviously, these were in here from some testing I did previously. So basically what this means is this guy only has an inventory space of one slot. So imagine your Minecraft player inventory, but then imagine it only limited to one slot. That's effectively what the LA has. So that means in that one slot, it can only have one non-stackable item or a maximum of 64 stackable items. So for some reason, it's listed as a change in this changelog, despite the fact I'm pretty sure it was here last week as well when I covered last week's beta. But anyway, if the Skulk Shrieker actually detects, like, you know, movement from, let's say, the Skulk Sense or anything, you get this darkness effect, which is going to look way better when you're in a cave actually fighting the Warden. As you can see here, the Warden has not actually been added to uh, Bedrock Edition just yet, so you're still going to have to play on Java Edition to get that. We're just going to destroy that thing, because I don't want to keep getting that darkness effect. You can also see here that when a zombie dies next to a skulk catalyst that of course the skulk stuff will actually spread and this is actually quite a lot of spread if I'm going to be completely honest and then when you destroy it it will give you experience assuming you're in survival. So next they have done something that I think we were expecting for quite some time I just personally wasn't expecting it now and that is updated the touch controls so here we are, I have loaded into the beta now on my actual phone. Hopefully this is all working and stuff like that. So let's see what this thing is about. So I have already messed around with these controls a little bit. Okay, so you should actually be able to see my like touch movement. So you can see there, hopefully you can see where I'm actually touching. So hopefully that will just help you out a little bit. And uh, anyway, let's just create this world and let's see what these new touch controls are all about. So here we are, and you can see right here already, there are two buttons that you can use to fly if you're in creative mode, or either just jump and crouch, which is quite nice. And yeah, I do like these buttons. And then you have this joystick over here. Now I'm actually using crosshair mode, which is not the default, but it is the mode that I prefer. And I believe there used to be something similar to this with the old settings that was called something like split controls or something, I believe. So yeah, I'm using crosshair mode, but you may want to use the other touch mode. They're fairly similar, just crosshair mode has a crosshair. Now to mine blocks or attack things or anything like that, if you actually tap on the screen where your crosshair is pointing, it will attack them or mine that block or whatever, which I think is quite nice. That is of course still kind of similar to how it used to be though. Now one thing that I don't really like about these touch controls is the joystick. So I like the idea of the joystick, like that's fine, that's not really the issue I have with this. The issue that I have with it is that when you tap just like at the top of the joystick for example, the joystick doesn't snap to where you're tapping so you actually have to physically drag the joystick as if it's a physical joystick, which I think is a bit of a bug. You can see here, I've got my finger here, so I would have expected it to, you know, the joystick just to snap to my finger and move forward. Now you can see there that it did snap to my finger and start moving forward. The reason why is because I moved my finger slightly 
and then it seems to snap to your finger, which is what makes me think it's a bug. It's kind of hard to explain. Hopefully I explained that well enough. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I like have my finger still, I move it and then it snaps, like the joystick snaps to my finger. It's weird. You can see here auto jump is enabled by default, which in my personal opinion is probably a good thing. So you can see here the inventory has not been touched at all. It is still all entirely the same. So I'm going to go and grab just like a chest or something for me to interact with uh, as soon as I remember which category it's in. Here it is. Because I'm intrigued to see what it's like. What is it like to interact with stuff? And uh, okay, yeah, so it's basically the same as how it used to be. And uh, that cross needs to be a bit bigger in the inventory s uh, screen because that's a bit annoying. But yeah, that is basically the same as how it used to be. Okay, so there's not really any different there with interacting with stuff from what I can tell. So this is going to be kind of hard to demonstrate, but basically shulker farming is now possible on Bedrock Edition. So if you can get a shulker to hit another shulker, there's a chance that it will duplicate. So I'm hoping that this will work. Okay, no. no um, oh, there we go. I managed to get one to hit it. Is this going to work? Sort of. I think. Possibly. Wait. Yes, they're, they're duplicating. Okay, this is brilliant. So as you can see right here... We managed to successfully duplicate shulkers. So when one shulker hits another shulker, it has a chance of duplicating, which is absolutely brilliant. And uh, oh man, I can't believe we managed to get this to work. Okay, I think we need to put another one here. You can see here, we literally started with two shulkers and you can see here, we already have way more. I am so, so excited to see this mechanic grow even further and things like that. This is very, very exciting. They have also changed the Iron Golem spawning logic, which now means that Iron Golems will be able to spawn better under roofed areas. So for an example, that means in theory, you could actually have Iron Golems spawning in things like a house, for example, because this is of course a roofed area. Obviously, I'm not saying that is what's going to happen, but in theory it could. This is probably going to affect iron farms in a good way. It means that you'll actually get more golems spawning on a bottom layer of an iron farm instead of just the top. Hopefully it doesn't break anything. I haven't done any testing, but I'm sure people like Hey Old Guy and stuff like that will do plenty of testing as they always do with these iron farm changes. Quite an interesting bug fix slash change is that if a village is on fire, you can no longer trade with it. So you can't open its inventory whatsoever or its UI to trade with it until it isn't on fire. So if we wait for that guy to be not on fire and then try trading with it, you can see we can open it. But if we set it on fire, we once again cannot trade with it. This also is the same for if you're in its inventory and it then gets set on fire whilst you have its UI open the UI will then close. Basically, you can't trade with a villager whilst it's on fire. I don't know who was trading with villagers whilst they're on fire, but uh, good to see this bug has been fixed. So a change that I know lots of builders really like, including Penape, who replied to my tweet about it, is that you can now place certain things on trapdoors. So for example, you can actually place redstone on trapdoors and glow lichen or lichen or have you say it, and torches as well. I'm assuming this works for the side. Oh, wow, it actually does. I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. So, yeah, that is that is very cool to see indeed. Obviously, you can't place features on top of it like that. It has to be either upwards like this or like flush with like a full the top of a full block or something. But yeah, this is a really, really nice little feature that I know lots of builders have been wanting for a while. And yeah, the stuff does actually break when you flip the trapdoor or open the trapdoor. I don't know why I said flip then. But yeah, basically the point is, is that it's a thing that we can do now, which is very, very exciting. Now I know it's been a feature on Java Edition for ages, but it would be really, really nice if we were actually able to place ladders on trapdoors. Fortunately, I'm clicking right now and uh, yeah, we just simply cannot place ladders on trapdoors, which is a shame. I'd love to be able to do that. I think ladders on trapdoors. But yeah, unfortunately, it does not look like we're going to be getting ladders on trapdoors in this beta. Maybe in the next one. You never know. So they have fixed a bug that I know I personally and many of us in the Bedrock Condition farming community have been waiting to be fixed for a long time. And it's finally been fixed. So basically, there is a bug where half of every random tick is discarded. This is just bad. Simply put it, it's bad. So any farm like a sugarcane farm or a dripstone farm like this one over here, every random ticks, it will have a chance of growing up, but effectively half of those random ticks are discarded, making all of our farms half 
as slow as they could be. Now this is for blocks, so it's things like dripstone and sugarcane and cactus, etc, etc, and crops, grass, so many things. Yeah, basically we should start to see faster dripstone farms, faster sugarcane farms, all of that sort of thing because of this one fix, which is just absolutely great. And I personally have been waiting for this for a while because finally we may actually have a nice way to farm sugarcane that isn't using bone meal. So there is a ton more features and bugs. Well, there's not really any more features, but there are a ton more bugs which you can read about here. Because of how long this video has gone on for, I don't really think there's any more that's worth actually going over. So I'm just going to end the video here. So other than that, thank you ever so much for watching. If you're interested in more Minecraft Bedrock Edition content, then feel free to like and subscribe today to join the Alien Empire. YouTube recommends that you might like the video on screen right now. So maybe go check it out. I'll see you in the next video coming very, very soon. Bye.